What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Detroit Red Wings and we're picking up where we left off here getting in to the 2023-2024 season starting off pretty damn good 17-3-3 there's a couple little iffy spots but the way our team is playing right now I should probably leave the lines the way they are not kind of move around Rasmussen yet um yeah, just kind of leave things as they are. Yeah, our fourth line isn't great right now, but eh, we'll see if that could fix itself. We'll see if we can, you know, maybe get a bit more out of our first line as well with the Sims. So we're going to take this month and see how we do. And then from there, I'll decide if I want to make any, any line changes or things like that. But yeah, that for the most part, we're just going to be tracking how this team's doing and, and things like that. Just keeping an eye on stats, keeping an eye on growth, all the production everything like that because we want to try to make another run at the Stanley Cup it's the time is now now basically like we're, we're really good right now we can abuse entry levels for the next couple years so let, let's see what happens basically all right so we're gonna sim up here we should be getting back uh funk on the 20th of this next month I believe that was his injury coming back on December 20th so we got to play without funk for a little while longer not the biggest of deals but you know, we have a pretty good depth, so we should be able to hold out. There we go. Nice 5-2 to two victory, continuing our torrid pace here this season. And my goodness, is it ever. <laughs> just finding ways to win and win. Just either it's good defense or good offense that gets, us, gets the job done. Scouts, on the other hand, it's a little bit slow going, but that's okay. Let's see what we got for the low elites here. There we go, one. This one's not being scouted. So let's get him. We'll just keep assigning a few more here for these low elites. That's our. These are our main targets, really. L later round guys, low elite guys. Get them all figured out. All these guys are around the same draft ranking. But that'll help us actually whittle it down. Not all these guys are going to be low elites. We know that. So just try to figure out the guys who are. And I like these ones. They're all a bit more spread out. So we have a better chance of striking gold, so to speak, with a few of these guys. Than we would with, you know, some of the others in the uh, earlier rounds. Though maybe more of them would be a low elite. We'd have to pick and choose around there because we just will not have enough picks. All right, I'll get like one more. And we'll wait. We'll let the scouts do do the rest of that on their own figuring it out till the next time they call upon us we'll reassess come on with yeah win that game as well so we started off a new winning streak four games so far looking good five games five to one win against boston chuber off didn't like his ice time right there what's wrong with you uh novotny next strain okay so that's in our ahl we got got a guy who could fill in rose of all went up to an 82 30 point no that's only 20 points in 28 games played what's it doing come on now that's an incredible line <laughs> look at the offense on that line are we just getting on no what the hell oh who knows you figure you get more oh well all right so we just gotta stick someone in here who do i want lindstrom i could but we do have some other guys who have some growth here I feel like that guy was a actual low elite. I know this guy is. I know Johnson is. Is Schmidt 21 or 20? A little top four, but closer to get to top six. And this guy's another righty, which we're pretty good on. I'll stuff this guy in there, even though he's only a guaranteed low top four. Oops. Put him on top. Who else do we want? Any prospect right here? Bergeron. Yeah, let's go with Bergeron in there and the extra attackers. Both on separate lines. Both should be pretty good. There we go. What's this guy's offense like? Yeah, not as good. I'm trying to go with like heavy offense on that top line, but it's not working too well. 
Dansk isn't doing too bad, so I'm liking that. All right, continuing on here. Nashville, not a great team. Can we get the points out of them? No, we lose to them 5-3. to three. Okay. It happens. You'll lose to some bad teams here and there. Not the end of the world. You'd like to not to, but it seems to happen more often than not when you become a really good team. Maybe it's because you notice it more. Grand Rapids. I'm pretty sure he wasn't out. Yeah, okay. Just a minor thing. But I always like to check, especially when it's AHL, because I have less of an idea sometimes what's going on there. But look at that. We lose a game, then we answer right back with a win. Can we make it multiple wins? No thanks. I don't like that. I rarely like computer trades. <laughs> oh, well, we couldn't. We got shut out by Arizona right after. So that's not great, but it ain't bad. Giovanni Smith now is injured. All right, so most of the injuries happening to our AHL. It's not ideal, but it's not terrible. All right, I think it's just that shine guy. I'll just stuff him in. He'll go everywhere. And then Smith will come back. All right, let's not lose multiple in a row. Okay, well, we get a point out of that one. It's not the end of the world. But we got to answer back with some dubs here. There we go. Shut, shut, shut Vegas down. Do it. All right, now we got Brendan Funk back. There we are. Okay, perfect. So now the only bad thing is, we know Chubarov and uh, Earl are not too happy about their ice time here. Hold on, I did something. Did I do something weird with this? No, I didn't. Okay, I just actually replaced him with Chalowski. I thought I maybe replaced him with Earl and then blah, 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 but I did not. All right, so. Funk goes back. Boom. And then we do this. But I, I think I need to try to figure out a way to get these guys more ice time. Because they're not happy with it. That's It's clear that they're really not. Yeah, their, their morale is taking some hits here. Which sucks. And what can I do about it? Our penalty kills... Really, like, everything's really good. So I'm like, I don't want to move it. So... Uh, we're in a really rough spot in that regard. Like, I even have him on the higher, f uh, oh wait, no I don't, never mind. Yeah, I, <laughs> our team's doing so good that I just, I can't even really justify giving them more ice time. Yeah, it sucks, we're in a rough spot here. They're losing that morale. But unfortunately, they're not the kind of guys who I kind of would stick in anywhere and be like, yeah, they're going to be fine. Like, penalty kill's doing really good. And I kind of can't really put them there. Fourth line's been improving. You see that plus minus. Ah, yeah, I don't know. Rasmussen's doing good on the power play once again. So it's like, where does the extra ice time come from? Kind of nowhere. Unless I like switch Chubarov and Funk. But again, our penalty kill is doing incredible. So there's really not many options that I have. Except unless I put them both on this 4-on-4. Four four, which probably wouldn't even be enough still. If I put Chubarov and Earl here, it still wouldn't really be enough. And switch them out with like Vahaladi and Funk. Or just double shift their ass four on four. Yeah, yeah. We're at that tough spot where we have a lot of good players and there's not really much I could do because the team's doing so well. There's not really a weak point where I can give them more ice time. I could force it in there, which I might end up doing, honestly. Okay, we're in a bit of win loss, win loss here now. Giovanni Smith's back. But our NHL team's going some doing some win loss stuff. Damn, and he's 80 overall now, but I still don't really like his defensive stats. He takes a lot of penalties too. I mean, that's a lot of penalties. He does have good giveaway takeaway. I do like that. But I don't like the penalties. What's his discipline? Yeah, 68. Yeah. 
Not a fan of that. Man. I'm still racking my brain trying to figure out how to get them more ice time. We'll see what happens here in this next stretch. Maybe I do want to switch things up. Alright, we've been win-loss, win-loss here for a while. Time to get some more wins stringed together. Come on now. Novotny's back. Good. Yeah, Griffins are doing incredible, so their record is really good. Not too bad. Seven games played, seven penalties, so he fought. And he has a plus one. Not too bad, Della Rivera. Let's get Novotny back in there, though. And again, we even have more good guys down here. 82 and an 80. Like, I'm trying to cap this guy out around 80. Because I think he'll be a very, very effective top six guy with those defensive stats. 86, 87, 87. I would honestly do the same with uh, Chubarov if he wasn't already 83, but again, this guy is looking like he's going to get really good. Oh, man. We are just in a rough spot here. Earl, on the other hand, I mean, 84. This guy's he's not looking as likely, but he would have to clear waivers if I wanted to send him down. He would obviously be claimed, so yeah. Anyway, but what I mean by less likely is that Funk is better than him, and might and Shubarov, if he surpasses Funk, will be in the top two, and I won't need a top four who's 84 overall, because I won't really be able to give him the extra ice time, I don't think, to, to make it okay. Okay, we just ended the month with four straight wins after, you know, three losses in that little stretch. Even another one right there, yeah. Not the greatest month considering the season, but we're going to have one of those 27, 6, and 4. It's still a really good record. We might be on top. We are on top of the division by, well, 6 points, a natural 4. And it looks like we're getting a lot of spread out scoring because our first line is not actually dominating. I think we could be scoring more, 3.32. I think we can get more, but this is impressive. 1.97 goals against. Below 2 goals against. 30.1 on the power play, 87.3 penalty kill, three shorties, four. Oh, we've actually lost more on home than the road. And last 10, 6, 3, and 1, so not on the greatest stretch. But my goodness. We're crushing it, man. We really are. This is one thing that's weirded me out, though. Where is there? I guess, okay, we just have a lot of guys in the mid range by the looks of it. Mantha with 32, Zadina, okay, Zadina hopped up there, 31 points now, wow, Hughes only with 30, only eight, only 18 goals, what the fuck, what are you doing, alright, a little bit of a step back year for Hughes, not that it matters, this is the first year of his, is it the first year or second year, second year of his big ass deal, uh, Larkin 26 points, Kravtsov 24, 16 goals, Zikov 24, I mean, they're all, these guys are all on pace for 50 points, Byfield might actually hit 50, Kovacs, these guys won't, but, I mean, we're getting a lot of good scoring. And here's what I think is really doing it, is our defensive scoring. 30 points for Ghost Despair, 23 for Jones. That's a lot. And they're doing really good together. Kind of everything's doing really good. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Both of our goalies are kicking ass here. Komisarek. Those stats are ridiculous. Five shutouts. Corpusalo, even I mean those those stats are ridiculous too, and you know he's got he's got the he's surprisingly you figure he had more points but twelve points in nine games played he's over overdoing what I need from him. But call him a Sarek, man those are sick. Stats are actually sick. Who's our rookie? Yeah, Kovacs. He's probably not going to be winning any uh, trophies there. Calders. We never know. When last year, forty-seven points. And yes, I'm still salty that goalies never win the Calder in this game. But yeah, you'd still figure we'd get some more points here. Mainly from Hughes. Who's, you know, it's not a good big of a year as he had last year. That's for that's for sure. I mean, it's very clear. But we are getting kind of... It doesn't feel like we're getting more from everywhere else. But when you look at it like this with Jones and Ghost Despair up there, like you have one, two, three, four... Eight guys who should be 50-plus point scorers, maybe nine. Like, that's really good for a team. And that, you could argue, is better than having one line that can tear it up. But it reminds me of last year's playoff where Larkin, that line kind of struggled. Hughes had to carry. We'll be able to do that again having a season like this. I hope so. So I'm not going to, like, hit a panic button or anything like that. 
But it is interesting. But with the way our defense is going, it almost doesn't matter. Now everyone's at a plus here. Only Rasmussen jumped back to an even. But he's not a minus anymore, so I'm kind of glad I didn't move around the lines. Everything's kind of working how it needs to right now in a lot of ways. So that's good to know. Let's check the uh, progress reports as well. Check on the young guns down there. See who's making strides. See uh, if we have any perceived holes. Who's going to be able to fill them. Larkin's still with a lot of stat growth. So if he loses some, it won't be horrible. It'll, But, you know, it will kind of... Uh oh Also, Kumaseric does have some statistical growth. But he should still be around 89-90 with all that so that's still good Hughes as well yeah most of this is gonna be stack growth here yeah pretty much all of it I'd say at this point besides Zikov well he is 23 yeah alright in the system here there we go Dingman this is the defenseman guy on the left hand side this is the guy who I'm excited about because I think he'll be ready for NHL next year. Look how he's growing. Passing 80... God damn it. Why is everyone built stupid? All right. Please have your defense built well. Okay. That's decent. 83, 90, 95. But his offense is built dumb. Hate when that happens, man. You get there, get hella good passing. Then their offense... All right. If that grows a shit ton more this year, I won't care. Like, give me... I want to see, like, 15 on that. And that'll... <laughs> What's that? Another 8? Yeah. That'll put him up to, like, 85. I'd like to see his, yeah, his offensive awareness like grow like crazy this year. I don't know if it'll happen. You can wish, though. But this guy's looking pretty good. Medium and leap for the left-hand side. But, again, we also have Vahalati. But one of these guys has got to be top two eventually, right? I'd rather it be Vahalati because I think this guy's like a two-way. But we'll see. All right. Other than that, this Haskins guy as well. Is that... Okay, he missed had good growth last year as well, or started at a high. No, unless he did. Unless that was one of my weird steals that started as a high overall. But this is some good growth from Haskins. He's at least on pace. I mean, 75. Passing and awareness is pretty good for where he's at. Pretty even. Shot's not amazing. Defense isn't incredible either. Because he is 75, so. Yeah, it's okay. Good physical game, though. Lighten, he's way behind schedule, but maybe a third, fourth liner. What's his face off like? Is he a face? Eh, 71 isn't horrible. Uh, other than that, ooh, Draper guy, another lefty defenseman. Very solid defense. And the franchise gold, he's growing a bit. But yeah, we're getting some solid growth here. I mean, this is kind of a lot to show at this point. We're only passing what? Yeah, we've only passed up into January. So that's a good amount of growth. I mean, we do have a lot of prospects, let's be real, but still, good to see. Okay, let's move on here. Get another month done. Keep things rolling. I'm going to check on Komaseric after this month as well to see if he might want an extension. It'll really suck if he doesn't. <laughs> Don't know what else to say about that. Like, I'll tender, I'll tender him, obviously, and try and bring him back and get some kind of extension out of him as team friendly as we can eventually but I'd rather do it now and then not have to fucking worry about it I hate those kind of headaches when it just doesn't make sense that he wouldn't want an extension you know what I mean like you just want a cup with this team this team's incredible you're doing great on this team why wouldn't you want an extension it's interesting and we are just continuing to dominate here so hard that I'm actually going to clear up my trade block they have Dotsuka on the block. How dare you? What, are we going to trade him to Arizona? Come on. There we go. Bring it all back. There we go. Now we shouldn't be bothered anymore. Especially coming at the trade deadline. Then I won't have to make the tough decision of where to, when to either to muscle through all those or just take it off before I pass the deadline. All right, two losses in a row. Well, not in a row there, but two losses in close proximity. Pretty hefty losses, too. Allowed some goals against. Don't don't you dare. Okay, good. <laughs> I saw that record. I was like, do not. Don't you dare lose to Minnesota. Don't do that. All right, keep it up here. 
Uh-oh, Dylan Larkin has been injured with a neck strain. February 3rd, that is about half a month that we will be missing Larkin. And we have quite a few games right there by the looks of it. So that's not great. All right. So Byfield's going to get some ice time. Who fills in on this third line? Valeno, how's your offense? Actually decent. And you got solid defense that I know of. So let's put you in there. I think VC can take faceoffs. No, never mind. Who's like? I, I know Rasmussen can. But we're going to get Senny in here. In fact, you know what? Let's scratch Byfield for a... Yeah, because I still want him where he's going to be. Hold on. Let me scratch Byfield. And then I'll sub him in all lines because he's going to take the place of Joe... Uh, of Larkin. Oh, shoot. If I do that twice, will it actually... Will Larkin replace him on the PK? Well, it's only on the PK that I really need to replace him. As well as the four. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll be able to see. Yeah, fuck. He's going to be doubled up on four and four. Not that that's a big deal, though. Oh, well. All right. So we got Senny. I don't know if he can take face-offs. If he can, then we'll just play him. Actually, he might be able to. But probably not as good as Rasmussen. So let's get Senny in here. Excited I get to use him again. He's always solid, man. So there we go. Pretty rough injury. Byfield's getting some extra ice time here and there. Let's see how he does on the power play. I mean, he's got good stats. His faceoffs aren't as good, but he, he looks capable. So we'll see how he fills in for Larkin here. And let's see what happened in that game where Larkin was injured. We won 7-3. So maybe someone took a run at I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past Calgary to take a runs at people. They got Sam Bennett and shit. All right, let's see. Ooh, we're not gonna get, be able to get that guy. There's no way we have a pick that high, but hey, it still looked good to see. Grinders. Obviously not excited about there being potential medium elite grinders, but hey. You wish they were something else. That's okay. Oh, look at that. Look at us go. Ed Teal. I wonder if this guy... <laughs> Never mind. Um, yeah, let's get this guy scouted. I'll just choose like one right here. We got a lot of guys completely scouted, so we'll let the auto scout keep going. Or my assignments and then auto scout. Or maybe the, my assignments ran out by this point. I can't even remember what the dates say. <laughs> oh, tough loss right there. What was that? Three losses. Four losses in this month. How dare you win this last game? Oh, Dylan Larkin. What? Fully healed. Didn't it say like February? Oh, whatever. All right, let's see. Three games plus one. Not bad. Not bad, Cockburn. Not bad. How did I do this? What? Wait, hold on, hold on. Okay, now I remember. All right, hold on. This is going to be interesting. So, okay, it will be 11, unfortunately. So I will have to put him basically back in in a lot of different places. So I might have just done this the really, really hard way. I think I did, but whatever. <laughs> Lark gets back in there. He'll be back in the 5 on 5 blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I did that the hard way. I should have done that a different way, but whatever. I screwed it up the first time, so it makes sense that I'll screw it up the second time. The good news is, at least, he'll be back there for the 4-on-4. Four four. I just have to switch him here. So that should be it when I finish this off, I believe. But I am going to kind of run through everything real quick. Yep. I think we're good. I know PK is good. Yeah, we're good. All right. And hold on, hold on. One thing I don't know about is that shootout. That shootout lineup. Nope. Okay, we're good. Cool. All right. Come on. Win this last game against the Isles. Do it. Do it now. Stop getting injured. You bitches. This sucks. More so, it's just annoying. Whatever, though. Enjoy. 
Anyway, oh, we lost to the uh, three losses at the end of that month. Rip, thirty four ten and five. We're slipping. <laughs> we should still be in first. Yeah, only by two points though. I told you Tampa Bay is going to be hanging around. They're right up there with us. All right, let's see what's going on here. We scoring less? Not really, but we let in a bit more goals. We're not scoring more either. Power play slipped a bit. Penalty kill slipped quite a bit. Hmm, that's an interesting. That's a pretty bit two percent slip. And that's like a three percent slip. We're are actually pretty bad on home ice, considering our way record's incredible. But that's pretty bad on home ice. I don't like that stat. Five, four, and one in the last ten too. We've kind of been getting. Worse and worse as this has gone on, record-wise. I'm not going to, like, point the finger, but... All right, 42 points. Hughes has got 20 goals. He might not even get 40 goals this year, which is a bit weird. But he should still get a lot of points. Byfield really hopped up there in some point, point areas. Larkin, he's missed three games. But... Wow, Kovacs, goal scorer. 20 goals, man. And he is a shooter. And he's playing third line, so this guy is a shooter. So if we don't want Kravtsov back, or if we think this guy's going to be better, that's a tough call. I might do one more year for Kravtsov. But Kovacs here, playing him with, like, Larkin, Zikov, or... We have, and then we still got to figure out what we're doing. Byfield, yeah, we got a lot of guys coming up. I mean, maybe we have Byfield replace Kravtsov, but the thing is, is like Byfield isn't a shooter. Zikov's not a shooter. Larkin's not a shooter. So yeah, Byfield's one of those kind of. I hate to use the word passenger, but that's kind of what he is on a line. He's more of a complimentary guy on the line. At least when we used him in. Uh, where was it that we used in Buffalo or can't remember somewhere he had a super team friendly deal Maybe it was Buffalo or New York one of the two I think anyway um, he's not really a game changing type guy he's more of a guy who supports the game changer dudes all right well Jones might not get 50 points at this rate but still a really good first pairing Chubarov and Earl a great second pairing Funk and Valhalati though not as good as they could be in my opinion Together. The unfortunate thing is, is that the guy who I'd bring up would be like Earl, but Churov and Funk, both defensive defensemen playing in that top six together. Nah. I want to leave everything the way it is. Coleman Sarek still with great stats. They both goalies have kind of dropped a bit. 19 points in 14 games played. It's always weird. Sometimes you get like better. Better uh, point point performances out of a guy with worse stats. <laughs> it's always weird to me how that works out. All right. Could we do anything to make that better? I don't know. Not real. I mean, what can I do to make that first line better? Kind of doing what they need to do. Hughes isn't scoring as much. But we got Mantha being there. The, the ratios are perfect. You know, we got the Mantha, who's the hybrid. Hughes is the goal scorer. Well, more of the goal scorer. So Dean is the freaking playmaker. Hmm. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. Who knows? But I just feel like that first line could be getting a bit more out of him. But what can you do, really? Let's keep it going here. So we'll get up to the deadline. Well, let's see how we do in this month, first and foremost. Hopefully, we have a really good month. I don't want to see too many more losses here. We've had a lot of losses. They've a lot of been, been on home ice, too. I'm not a fan of that. So we got to get back on the winning side of things. Get some big games in us, man. There we go. That's 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 a response for my boys right there. Six to one win, six to nothing win. We knew we could play better, and we did it. All right, Oscar Donsk is back. 
cheat you, man. I don't even think I have this guy signed. Do I? No, I don't. It's just 76 at like... <laughs> Bye. Okay. Keep her going here. Keep her going. I want to see a win right here. There we go. Another shutout. Two shutouts in a row. All right. Good response here. Last three games, only one goal against allowed. Tampa, this is a big game, man. They're right here with us. We have to be able to beat these teams. Oh, tough game. Tough game. Two to one loss. Damn it, man. Oof, and then a four. Oh, man. Come on, guys. We're better than this. We're better than these consecutive losses, man. Truly. We really are. There we go. But I, we're better at offense than this, too, man. We had those two good ones. Kind of fell back down again. There we go. Good response. That's what I like to see. Uh, hmm. Nope. <laughs> as high as his, like, offensive or defensive awareness could go was, like, 82, 83, I think. Because he was at, like, three ticks, 79. I don't have that math completely figured out yet. I don't really care enough to. I mean, I should, but that would take it takes that takes a lot of experimenting. It's a lot easier figuring was figuring out like the draft and the elite stuff. At least for me, maybe I just don't have the right kind of mind to figure out the different the statistical stuff. But I think I had I think I was theorizing it about it at one point. Like, was it maybe last year where it was like, or when it what, was it when they had all the colors? I think it was when they had the colors, but maybe that's the same thing now was that I can't even remember what it was like if they if they're stat. You remember when you're the old scouting system when they had the numbers and they were either red, yellow or green for how accurate they were. I think it was like I think I had if they were red, it was like it could go up and down like 15 up or down 15. I should say if it had yellow, it could go up or down 10. And if it had green, it could go up or down five. And then, you know, when you when you had him exactly scouted, obviously that was exactly it. I can't remember. So, I'm sure, this is, and that was NHL 17. It had to be, unless NHL 18 didn't have the ticks. I mean, yeah, wait, I'm I'm confused. I've played way too many NHL games, but uh, we've been doing really good since I've been talking a bunch of bull crap. So maybe I should just keep talking a bunch of bull crap. Wasn't even looking at the calendar. I'm just kind of thinking in my mind. Maybe it's the same kind of system, just with different fucking setup. <laughs> it's now the ticks instead of colors. I think it did that. Was it colors last year? Was it this method? But I don't think it would have been, because this was the new scouting year. Who fucking knows? 45, 12, and 6. What an incredible record. We have over 40 wins, less than 20 regular losses at the deadline, which is always a good thing. That's what you're pushing for. And there's Hughes there, 51 points, 20 CI. Yeah, he's not going to hit 40 goals. No way. He's only got 19 games less. He ain't getting 14 in that span of time. Bit of a drop back year for our uh, first line. However, our entire team did really well. So you can't really hate it. I mean, 3.3 goals, four per game is really good. We should be higher, but still. Goals against went back below two. 25% power play, 85% penalty kill. I wish it was still higher the way it was at the beginning of the year. But it's still good. I mean, mid, mid 80s is great. Still can't hate that. We also got four shorties for 28 and four on home ice, 25, four and two on the road, eight, one and one in the last 10. Looking really strong right here. But yeah, all our guys are way below point a game, which in my, it is, it has been interesting this year, you know, because it's not like we have other guys who are like close up there with them, but we do have guys like Byfield and Kovacs taking, you know, getting a huge amount of points. Kovac is going to be a 30. I mean, he might even have more goals than fucking Jack Hughes. Probably not, but, I mean, he might. You never know. <laughs> Guys scoring at will. So, yeah, maybe a little bit of a step back year for certain guys. But, honestly, it's not that big of a deal because we have incredible depth scoring. Crab Sog's 20-goal score might hit 50 points. Kovacs might hit 30 goals, which, after that, it doesn't matter. Byfield might hit 50 points. Larkin should. He's you know, still kind of stepping back here. It's a little bad for us because he has a lot of stat growth. 
but what can you do? So I don't like, I don't know, you'd think I could get 70 and then 60 points with the way we're scoring, but I think because we got third liners stepping up, along with defensemen producing, such as Ghost Bear and Jones for that matter, I mean that's 70, 84 points from two defensemen. That's a lot of points, and they're playing together. Well, that plus minus is fun to look at. So again, I think you gotta you gotta kind of look to the overall team goal score. I would like to have it up to three point five. I'm not gonna lie, but I also don't want to break up how this team's doing. But oh my god, look what Colmasarek's doing! Oh, dude, I don't think there's any way he doesn't win the Vesna at this point, unless he does just completely trash towards the end. And what a good uh. What a good last little stretch for Corpusalo. I mean, this should help him carry him into free agency. Yeah, he didn't play a whole lot of games. And he was kind of relegated to a backup role. How do you do in that starter role? People will probably look to that. Do we know? Yeah, oh, yeah, we never even really had him in a starter role here. That's right. <laughs> Poor guy. But it's still really good. And you know what, Kovacs, man, if he keeps up the pace he's at, maybe he gets a bit more here. You might actually see him in the Calder talks, just because we saw what last year is, but I have no clue. I don't even know what the, the rookie class is looking like. All right, I want to check something here. Ah, oh, set me back. Come on, who's standing up? Mantha and Funk, one fight apiece. <laughs> That's our entire team. Two fights for our entire team. All right, well, we haven't got too many injuries for it. Our AHL was getting injuries from me. Who knows? All right, let's check out some of that growth again. We actually should see some bigger jumps here at this uh, trade deadline. Oh, yeah, I forgot to check Komasarek, who is actually looks like he's growing. Yep. <gasps> what? <laughs> this guy's going to be ridiculous. Okay, cool. That's he's still growing naturally. Everyone else is just stat growth by the looks of it. Maybe not Valhalati though. Yeah, there we go. Well, it's still skating. It's not the greatest. Chubarov actually might have some natural growth. Yep. Deking hand eye passing. Again, not the greatest. Nothing else from anyone else in the system here. Oh my god. Well, that answers that question. I mean, yeah, I guess he was just growing at it. What do you want from 75 to 82 right now? Pat, please, you, oh, oh, that's not him. That's right, that's right. It was someone else. Oh. Not the greatest shot. Oh, man, he's getting good. Holy hell. Where the hell is this guy coming from? Fifth round pick. Jesus. Insane growth. Where the hell is that defenseman? There he is. Okay, he's up to 81 now. All right, if you're... Hmm. Wait, no, it wasn't him. Who's the guy with the crazy? Who the fuck was it? It was someone. It was a defenseman. Maybe this guy got reset. Maybe Draper got reset. Because I thought it was higher last time. Wasn't it Draper with lower offensive awareness? And then... Uh... I'm having a bit of a crisis here. I, th I totally thought it was him. Was it? Wasn't Dotsuk? Maybe it was. Maybe they. Maybe just the weird thing where it kind of reset his growth, and then we it, we he got up to like eighty or seventy nine, and then we just see the extra three to get up to eighty three. That might be the case. Who the hell knows? Weird stuff in this game sometimes. But I, I thought for sure that that was him with the weird spread out offensive stats. Great defense, though. Wow. Well, we have so many good prospects here. Like, there's no really way to get around that. We do. We have a really good prospects. So abusing entry levels is going to be a very real thing. Goodness gracious. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of growth, and we're probably even missing some just from the numbers alone because judging by what this game kind of does and what we saw with Draper right there. But now here we are, trade deadline. I don't think we should make any trades at all, but, you know, you never know what some other people would see. 
That's me personally, though. I mean, damn, man. I don't know if we're going to keep around crafts off. Depends, man. Maybe for another year to wait for... But the thing, like, we got so many other guys, man. I think Byfield could probably hang tough and play third line another year. And give him a bunch of extra ice time. But we, yeah, still doesn't answer what we do with Kravtsov in this next year. So trade-wise, I don't really know. I, w I wouldn't make any trades. This team's just doing way too good to really consider that, in my opinion. But what we got to consider here is some... Um, Kravtsov doesn't, doesn't want extension, so should I listen to him? Hayes does... Oh, unfortunate. I wanted Hayes back, kind of. Ooh, yeah, price-wise, it's that's I'd have to spend about the same amount. I would try to save money. Earl's gonna want an extension. I don't know that I want to extend Earl here. I just don't know. Yeah, he's having a good year. But I just don't know, because we have so many other good guys. Fuck, Komoserik. Why, though? Huh. God, dude, if he wanted an extension, man, I could get him for under 10. Son of a bitch, man. Oh, unfortunate. <laughs> I was hoping that would go down with years and I could maybe have Corpus Allo as a backup again. Damn it, dude. I don't know. We're going to have to tender Corpus Allo and then try to get him. I just don't know what else to do. I could try the one-year thing. And then try to get into an extension again. Some Somehow get him into a team-friendly deal. I don't know, but... Pretty rough that he doesn't want an extension. I hate when that happens. With the, like, you're young. It's his, it's his entry level. Like, why the fuck wouldn't he want an extension? Tendering his ass, no problem. Like... Maybe I should tender him. And see what what he would be asking for. I don't know. Um, anyway, Rasmussen, VC wants to come back. I'll probably get VC back, because I should be able to get him to a... Well, not as... Not that much lower, but it is, will be lower. Give me a sec. Let me get that calculatrice. We're at that point. We're even a little contracts. We gotta save that cash. I do want VC back. I think he'd be really solid. 1.87, so... Right there for a year. Pretty solid deal. We're, we're up at almost 100 mil cap space. You gotta consider that's only like... Well, one one point seven or one point eight five percent or eight seven five percent. Pretty damn good. Rasmussen is a bit tougher, but if I, I'll probably only do one year because we got so many other like players on the way up. If we don't have to bury it, we have to bury it. Damn, I have to get him right there. Whatever. Sign that Chalowski. I don't know about Senny. I really like Senny. I can't help it. He's fucking solid for depth. What I really like is his offense that comes with it. And he has, de like, he can play anywhere. Doesn't have the best defense anymore, but where he's played, he's, he's always done really good. But I'll wait on Senny. It's not, it's not like, not needed that I sign him right now. So those are extensions. We got Byfield coming up in two years. Earl coming up now. That's a tricky one. Considering, oops. Ugh. There we go. Considering what we got in the system. Draper. He's a lefty, though, but still. Clef Bomb, he's not really going to be anything. What kind of player is he? Defensive defenseman. He's not really cut. Well, he might be cut out to be top six in the future. If we keep him around where he's at, which is defensive. Awareness was a bit better. Oh, it was this Dingman guy, wasn't it? Yeah, there. Why wasn't he showing up in the growth se section? Maybe just erased his growth. That's the one. Dingman. There we go. Okay. That's the one that's weird. Well, I got another year to keep him off contract, so I will. Yeah, Draper. This is this is the guy who I think will be our our, our top four. Enforcer. Shit. A Eighty discipline though. <laughs> what kind of enforcer are you, dude? He's got good defensive stats. Seven penalty minutes. What an enforcer. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? Uh, he's off contract, so I don't know. Maybe if I sign. I don't know. I think it'd be cool to use him. 
Novotny probably gone. Huh, yeah, I mean, top four, another top four. We got to start lining guys. I don't know. We got so many guys who were thinking that could be top six. Thinking McIsaac is going to be really good on that side. Draper could be the top four. So what do we really need Novotny for? Because I like the way McIsaac's built better. And if we have on the right side... A defensive defenseman such as Clefbaum for our top six. Like, I'm thinking this for our future top six when we have to kind of, you know, keep guys in their roles, keep the chemistry up, and spend a little less money. That's kind of what I'm envisioning. Sorry, right, Clefbaum. We're going to extend... Yeah, he's going to want his actual deal. But next year, will that be the year where we put everything forward in that regard? Should we maybe implement that now? I can't. It's so hard for me to want to implement it because I kind of want to run with uh, with Earl here, even though it's his last year. He's going to want some cash. I can't really get away from that. I could tender and trade him or just let him go. Or tender and let someone sign him. Also, we still have Chubarov, but that's... I think he could be up to top four. If Funk can get the top two or he can go to top... I don't know. Trying to Trying to plan for the future here. But I think that's pretty much all the extensions I want to do right now. I don't think I need to do anything else. Chalowski, he's okay for depth. Not extremely happy with it, though. So, probably let him walk. We got to find like a pure, a true depth guy eventually for depth money. Trying to be using guys in our system for it. Well, yeah, so I think those are the guys I want to extend right now. Get some of your guys' feedback on that, and as well as possible trades. I don't think I see any trades to make, but Kravtsov might be leaving. So maybe we maybe dish him off and grab someone else, but I don't think that's the greatest idea right now. I want to I roll with the team that we have, and yeah, if we have to let him go, we let him go. The, um, what's his name should be popping up, and then we'll have a year where we can play Byfield up there. And if our second line isn't producing as heavily, maybe first line will produce more. I think that's the way our kind of team will work here. So I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think about the trade deadline, other extensions and things like that. What you guys see for the future of this Detroit Red Wings franchise. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.